And I, and I believe that as we start to move into deeper things and things like that, that the enemy is going to try to stop us. But it's time for us to stand up and be strong and be aware of this. Amen? And don't allow it to, to, to stop us from being what God wants us to be. So what I've done is I want to just read something to you to start with. Um, the first thing that I want to read to you was what I said about the next move of God that I really believe is going to happen. I believe the next move of God will, lead, uh, will not lead to a denomination or be contained in a denomination. It will be the true church without walls. Though many denominations will join in, their identity will, not, will be with Jesus and not with the denomination. I really believe that. So I've just printed that out. I know I shared it the other week, but I've got it here. And if you want one, uh, I've got plenty of them for you to listen to read if you want. But I also understanding the times that we're living in. World powers are rising and others are falling. Right from the beginning of time, Satan wanted to rule God's creation and he uses man to achieve his plan. The Romans, Hitler, communism, now China and North Korea all want to rule the world. It's Satan inspired to try to remove God's place. When Jesus was on the planet and for a period after, a great change occurred. God had his man on this planet. Jesus and then the Holy Spirit. The church began to draw people by way of evangelism and a demonstration of God's power, healing, etc. No sword was needed, only the sword of the Spirit. The then known world was coming under the atmosphere of God's anointing, but Satan again got the upper hand through false religion and tradition. But the atmosphere is changing again. God's true church, full of the Holy Spirit, is rising the true church without spot or wrinkle must rise. The cross, the blood, the name of Jesus, the resurrection, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, the church triumphant must be preached without compromise. The truth and only the truth will make us free. So folks, I've got copies of that if you want to. I, I want to read this daily <laughs> myself and it's just something that I really felt God spoke to me about. So... If you want one, they're there after the meeting. Amen? So, how many people love Jesus today? God's a good God. He's an amazing God. I want to talk about uh, the fresh awakening that I believe that God is about to do. God is doing a... No, I don't. That was last week. <laughs> it sounded good. <laughs> I want to actually, this morning, I've got a visiting ministry coming, and I want to tag preach with him. Uh, he's the Apostle Paul. He was Saul of Tarsus, uh, a tent maker, and he's going to tag preach with Neil the carpenter, and now a pastor of an amazing church. <laughs> I want to just say this, but I, I believe that we, as God's people, it's got to be all about him. Amen? Turn to somebody and say, it's all about him. Not about me. It's not about me. It's not about my. It's not about myself. It's got to be all about him. A lot of times we can be very selfish, self-centered, wanting just blessing or whatever it might be, but it's got to be about him. Whatever God wants us to go through, we've got to go through. Paul's ministry has achieved So much. His achievements, what God did through him is amazing. How and why did God, was he able to use Paul in such a way? I believe his words still are echoing through the chambers of time. They're still echoing out there. They're echoing today wherever we are. They're echoing in our, as we read. It just something gets inside of us. I believe the secret of his success was found in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 2. He said, For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I was determined to know nothing, nothing, nothing else among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I don't believe that we are to worry about things that are going on around about us. I believe that we've just got to concentrate on him. It says here, let's just read this. It says, And I, brethren, 
when I came to you, did not come with excellence of speech or of wisdom declaring to you the testimony of God. That word testimony means the mystery. Declaring to you the mystery of God. And what Paul did mainly through his ministry was he brought a revelation. He brought understanding. And that's this morning. I pray that as I share some of the things that Paul said, that, that we would hear the amazing revelation, the mystery of the victory of the cross. A lot of people look at the cross and they, they see it as, as, a, as a negative thing, but the victory of the cross. They look at the grave that Jesus went to. They, they see the, the negativity of that, but it really the victory that was in the cross. The victory that was in the grave. The grave couldn't hold him, amen. It says, For I was determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. I was with you in weakness and fear and much trembling, and my speech and my preaching were not with per persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith would not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Amen? Father, help us today to comprehend and understand the, the magnitude and the majesty and the, the mysteries of this Word that we preach. Father, open our ears and our eyes and our understanding. Open our hearts to, to, to what you've, you've accomplished for us, my God, that we will triumph over every work of the enemy that your church would rise in this hour. And for that, we'll give you all the praise and give you all the glory. And everybody said, Amen. In Paul's letter to the Galatians, Galatians chapter 3, uh, it, it says there, O foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that you would not obey the truth for before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified? Another thing that Paul said here in, in actually in chapter 2 and verse 20, it says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. What an amazing verse of Scripture. David Blair, I remember it would have been most probably 25, 30 years ago but you stood most probably, might have been even longer, at the gatehouse somewhere that you were preaching and you sh shared that scripture. And that scripture, as you shared it, it, it dropped on, on the inside of me. It's no longer I who lives, but Christ who lives in me. Amen. It's no longer I that liveth. And there, that's an amazing statement because this man was very much alive. But what he was trying to say there, I've been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And what he was really saying is, what I've done and what's happened in my life, what's been crucified is my will, my plan, what I want to do. I've given it all up for Jesus. Amen. That's, friend, I believe that there's a stronghold that's in our lives. It's called the flesh. There's something that's going on there that God wants to change in our lives. I've been crucified with Christ, and it's no longer I who lives, but Christ lives in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Who do not, I, I do not set aside the grace of God, for it, for if, sorry, for, sorry I've, written, I've covered this over with a pencil, I can't see it. For if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died in vain. O oh, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that you should ob not obey the truth? I wrote some things down here. I've been writing, reading a book that's changed my life. It's from Frank uh, Badelman. It says this. This is what he said. He wrote uh, he re just to write things that came to his head. He said, Oh, the thrill of being fully yielded to Christ. My mind has always been very active. Its natural working has caused me most of my trouble in my Christian experience. Can anybody identify with that? 2 Corinthians 10.5 Nothing hinders faith and the operation of the Spirit so much as the self-assertiveness of the human soul. The wisdom, strength, and self-sufficiency of the human mind this must be crucified. 
This is where the fight begins. It's not the devil, but the human mind or will. We want the Holy Spirit, but in fact, the Holy Spirit is wanting possession of us. Oh, the thrill of being fully yielded to Christ. This is what it's all about, friends, is being fully yielded to Christ. Allowing Christ in our vessels. Amen. Allowing Him to be the one that wants to touch us in an amazing, amazing way. Letters of Paul to the Ephesians. We're just going to read some of his letters, amazing letters. Therefore, it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, Therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you, may give to you, may give to Chris, may give to you, give to Joan, hallelujah, that might give to, to Luke, that might give to whoever you are today, that might give to you. You've got to put yourself in this picture that God, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of His calling and what is the riches of the glory of His inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of His power towards us who believe according to the working of His mighty power, which He worked in Christ when He raised Him from the dead. Can I hear a hallelujah? Can I hear an amen? The work that He worked in Christ when He raised Him from the dead and seated it in His own right hand in heavenly places, far above principalities and powers and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this age but also on that which is to come. And He put all things under His feet and gave to Him to be head over all things to the church which is His body, the fullness of Him that fills, that fills all the earth. Amen. Gee, I want to tell you, Paul gave us revelation. He gave us understanding. He was trying to show us the mysteries that you are more than a conqueror that you can do exceedingly abundantly above all that you could ever imagine or think, that you were crucified with Christ and Christ there was raised from the dead. Hallelujah. And I want to tell you, He has triumphed over every enemy. He has triumphed over every work of Satan. He wears the victor's crown today. Amen. He has triumphed over hell and death. Friend, the church needs to be awakened. We hear a story about the ten virgins and it speaks to me about the church being asleep. Friend, I want to tell you, the church in Australia has been asleep for centuries. It has been asleep. But I want to tell you, there's an awakening sound. The bridegroom is coming. Get yourself ready, amen. Prepare your hearts. Rent your clothes. Rent, rent your hearts, not your clothes. But be awakened to the things that God is doing in our world. We are living in an awesome time. Don't go to sleep. Don't go to slumbering. Don't fold up your arms, but lift up those hands and hang down. Amen. What an amazing verse of Scripture this. It says, And you He made alive who are dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power uh, of the air, the spirit who now works is in the sons of disobedience among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and by nature children of wrath just as others. In other words, he's saying, come on, I want you out of the world. I want you to get a hold of God. I want the Spirit of God to get around you. That's what you were like, but you've been born again. You've been transferred out of that kingdom, that kingdom where you were driven by those things. And now I've bring, brought you into a whole new kingdom, a kingdom of victory, a kingdom where you can overcome, where you can triumph over the devil. Amen. It's time for the church to rise. But God, who is rich in mercy because of His great love with which He loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Friend, don't go sitting down in the muck. 
Go and sit where God wants you to sit, in heavenly places, hallelujah, far above principalities and powers and dominion and might and everything that tries to exalt itself above the knowledge of God. Oh, Rashakabande, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches, riches of his grace and his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. I told you I was going to have Paul preach this morning. Amen. <laughs> is it all right to have Paul preach to us this morning? I want to encourage you to read the writings of Paul. I want to encourage you, once you get that established in your heart, that God before you who can be again you, once you establish that you love God with all your heart, once you've decided, God, I will not be moved, but I'm going to follow you. I want you to read the writings of, of Paul and get the revelation. Before you open the book, say, God, will you reveal the hidden mysteries in this book that you want to reveal to me? Will you reveal who I really am in you? Will you show me who I am, my God? And as God opens up your eyes of understanding and you start to stand tall and you start to walk against the enemy and you look at him eyeball to eyeball, don't you run away from the devil. You stand your ground in Jesus' name and you eyeball that devil and you say, get out of my face, you defeated foe. Friend, it's time to not play tiddlywinks. It's time to stand and declare and demonstrate the power of God. Amen. The triumph over the enemy. Oh, Jesus, what an amazing, amazing story that this book is. Let's have a look at 3.17. That Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that, through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend. In other words... <clears throat> It's, it's all the way through it that you might be able to understand. Because you see, the thing that will stop you is, your, is how you think. It's how you think. If you think wrong, you will live wrong. If you think right, you can live right. Amen. He wants us to be able to comprehend, understand, get the picture, know who you really are. Friend, I am not just a mere man. I am a child of the Most High God. Amen. We are anointed vessels. We are the church triumph. We are the people of God. We are God's voice on this planet. We are God's workmanship. We are God's handiwork. We are what God is going to use. He's not going to use something else. He's going to use you and me. Praise God He's going to use us. Amen. Praise God He's going to use us. That Christ, Christ may dwell in your heart through faith. That you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and the length and the depth and the height to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge. That you may be filled with the fullness of God. Now to Him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the uh, to the work to, sorry according to the power that works in us to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations god help us today help us today help us today next one there i just went through the book like this <laughs> It's uh, Philippians 2. I'm trying to, with myself, because you see, I'm not over there and you're here. I want you to understand that. I'm not over there, up this tree and you're all down here 
And here I am spoken to you. I ought to tell you, I'm right here in the midst of you. And what I'm talking to you is what God is saying to me and what I am dealing with and what I've got to break through with. Because if, that, if I want to go where God wants me to go, I'm going to have to go through this. Amen. And if we as a church are going to go where God wants us to go, we're going to go through it together. Amen. I don't want you seeing me somewhere else. I'm here right in the midst of us. And we've got to have this mind in us. We've got to have somehow or other our minds renewed. We've got God's got to do something in our thinking. The Bible is very clear as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. And it says here in, in, in Philippians 2 verse 5, it says, Let this mind be in you, which, all, which was also in Christ Jesus. How many people need your minds changed, channeled, changed, whatever? Come on, give me, come on, tell the truth and shame the devil. I'm here, I've got my hand up. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. He made himself of no reputation. What, he, what that is really saying is he emptied himself of his privileges. He emptied himself of the privilege of who he was to become something so that he could go through what he went through. He made himself of no reputation or he emptied himself of his privileges, taking on the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. He emptied himself of the God thing over his life and he became a man. And being found in the appearance as man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. How many people can say, praise God? Thank you, Jesus. And look at this, therefore. What did I say when you see therefore? You've got to see what it's there for. Yes, we can talk about that. That's what he did. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of the death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him a name. Friend, I want to tell you that I believe that what God is looking for is a church that is about to say, God, have your way in me. God, I humble myself. I have no reputation. I am a nobody, but I am a child of God. In the natural, my God, I am nothing. I, when I die, I'm just going to go back to dust. But I want to tell you, God, there's a part of me on the inside that has come alive. Hallelujah. It's been born again. Amen. And it's, it's going to war against the enemy. And I, I, he wants us to have this mind in us. Know who you are. Yes, we're that, but, but somehow or other, I've got to now say, I know who I am. I am a child of God. I've been filled with the Holy Ghost. I have the anointing, amen. God said, I can lay hands on the sick and they will recover. I'm going to say what God says about me. I don't care what people say about me. It doesn't matter what people say about me. There will be many that will rise up and say wrong things about me. There's a lot of people that will say wrong things about you. They said wrong things about God. Today, the church is saying wrong things about the Holy Ghost. There's a lot of things that are going on, but it doesn't matter what people say. It's what Jesus says hallelujah and Jesus says that I'm more than a conqueror through Christ who loves me and gave himself for me didn't die in vain he didn't die in vain amen don't go to sleep don't be saying I'm I'm part of the I'm I'm one of the sleeping virgins no come on be the awakened ones in Jesus name Oh, anybody else getting anything out of this? Oh, I want to tell you, when Joe was sharing, sharing that vision, Joe, I was right in there. Somewhere else, I jumped right into that thing. As you were sharing that, I jumped right. I could honestly see. I was in the garden with you. I could see that great white gate. Amen. I could see like a, a dome over the top of it. I saw like, I had goosebumps all over me. Oh, shakabundi. <laughs> oh, somebody say shakabundi. Oh. Say hallelujah, say praise God, say something for goodness sake. <laughs> say something. Oh, Jesus. 
Therefore God has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee will bow of those things in heaven and those things on earth and those things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. God, why don't we shout out, praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Jesus is Lord. I remember when David wrote that sign on the top of that church. All hell broke loose. My goodness. My goodness. Colossians 2. I just picked little snippets out of Paul. He didn't mind. He said, I'll come with you, boy. Verse 6. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him rooted and built up in Him, and established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty, uh, an empty deceit according to the tradition of man. Friend, man's mouth is coming to try to destroy what God's doing. Amen. Man's mouth. Don't allow the tradition of man to stop you. I'm going to close here with the book of Romans. Romans chapter 12. You all know where I'm going. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what it... Prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God? I've, I've memorized most of these, these verses in the, in the old King James. <laughs> and so my tongue gets twisted sometimes because it wants to go to the old King James, but my eyes are going somewhere else and I get a little bit confused from time to time. But I want to tell you, God doesn't mind. I don't mind because it's mind over matter. I don't mind and it don't matter. Joel Osteen's joke this morning, Nancy came in and told me. He said, this man went out, elderly man went out to pick up his paper. When he opened up the door, there was a dog there, the neighbor's dog, and it brought the paper into him. And so he didn't have to go out to the footpath to pick up the paper. So he went in and he got the, he got a treat the dog and gave it a treat. The next morning he opened up the door and there was a dog with eight newspapers. <laughs> he said a little bit of encouragement goes a long way. And I love Jesus. Hey, come on musicians. God, open our minds. Help us, Jesus, to be able to comprehend. Help us, Jesus, to be able to just want to read. A few more things here. Romans 8, 35. It says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? So tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword. As it is written, for your sakes we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep of the slaughter. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. How many people believe that? says, and this is where I guess the whole crutch of it is. For I am persuaded, Paul says, that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of Christ. 
I tell you the truth, I am not lying. What? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? So shall tribulation, the stress, persecution, famine, nakedness or peril or sword, sickness, whatever it might be. Friend, I want to tell you this. What I believe is saying here, what can separate me from God? What can separate me from what Jesus wants to do? There's nothing that can separate me. In other words, if we can just somehow or other comprehend it, if we can just comprehend God for a moment, that wherever you are, He is with you. But what we normally do is yell out, Why? Instead of, You're here with me. I'm reminded of a lady that was in our church many, many years ago. She had a dad that was a tyrant. Unloving, unkind, treated her very, very badly. Hardly ever talked to her, hardly ever had a nice word. It was very, very negative to her. He had a stroke at, his, at an old age, was put in hospital. She went beside his bed and sat with him day in and day out as he lingered between life and death. He couldn't speak, he couldn't say a thing. He'd never, in all of her life, he had never ever said, I love you. And there's one thing that was longing in her heart to hear her dad say, I love you. And here he is in his deathbed, and she started to share Jesus with him. She started to talk about this Jesus who loved him, and gave his life for him. Eventually, because he was there and he could, he sort of was coherent a bit, but he couldn't speak. She said, Dad, do, would you like to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior? If you do, squeeze my hand. He squeezed the hand. She led him through the prayer of salvation. She said as she was leading him, tears were rolling down his face. Many other days went by and she sat there with him. She said all of a sudden, one day, he sat up in bed like a, like a bolt of lightning with his hands raised and his eyes fixed on, on, a, on a person coming towards him. He turned to this woman and said, I love you. And in saying those words, he fell back under the pillow and breathed his last. We, if only, if only, if only, if only, if only, if only, we could catch a glimpse of how much God, that amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. This, that man was a wretch. But God, who was so amazing, was looking down and we think He's too busy for us or, or I don't know what we think at times that He's not interested, but He is interested in you. He hears the cry of your heart and somehow or other if we give Him an opportunity, He will come through for us. Amen. This woman, as she sat there, startled, I love you, and boom, he's gone. Saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. And friend, that's the whole crutch of this message, is that we would have our eyes opened to be able to see the awesome power of God. Linked, linked with that prophetic word that says that God's about to pour out of His Spirit upon us. It's what we've been speaking about. I don't know what, but friend, there's so many of us that have been messed up with tradition, religiosity that's come down the ranks and files. There's so many of our opinions that are so messed up by, by the traditions of man. Told, I don't know if I shared the story properly, but when, when we went to Israel, Nancy, who didn't want to get baptized to start with, now goes over to Israel and she wants to get done again. 
But my teaching said you only get done once. She was set free. I was still bound. Amen? Once I was bound, but now I'm free. <laughs> Once I was lost, but now I'm found. God wants to take us. I felt him brooding over us this morning. God is brooding. He wants to take us to a place in him. Jesus. I don't know about you, friends, but I just want to surrender. Surrender to his will. Some people think how stupid you are, Neil. What do you think you're doing? You know what I'm doing? I'm doing the will of God. That's all I'm doing. And I want to say this, there's no greater, no place I'd rather be than here right now with this people, with you and him as we focus on him. There's people here today that need that touch changing us. to share how last week I just as I started to read that statement I just felt that closing in on me the uh, that message by the way was not recorded because of the uh, something happened it was all we thought it was going through but it wasn't it just didn't happen I don't want to give the devil any place. I don't give him any place. But he's active, okay? He's active. And he, he'll do whatever he can, whenever he can, wherever he can. And I know this, that if this is what I sense, then what I'm sensing, I would imagine that there are a lot of you that are also sensing pressure. Uh, things around your life that conflict I don't know all I know is this the Bible says one shall put to flight one thousand two that is really the prayer of agreement will put to flight ten thousand and we're just here today to come into agreement I praise God that the people that are praying for me Without that, I'd be done. But this is here. We are here now. And I just want to open this altar to you. If you're, if you're a part of that, 
You must surely be part of the army. You must surely be part of the war that's going on. And you can just come and stand out here with us. And we're just going to pray the prayer of agreement that will release us. The war is raging, friends. Let the atmosphere of God get around you. I've got full fresh on.